So classes and objects, what is a class and is it different to an object or an instance? Well, let's look at what a class contains. It contains state and it contains behavior. Now, they're big words, but what it really means is something that it knows and something that it does. The things that it knows can also be called instance variables, fields, attributes. It's all really the same thing. And the behavior can be called actions, methods, functions, procedures, subroutines, but it stands for the same thing. It's a small block of code which tells it how to do something. So again, to summarize, a class contains state, things it remembers and knows, and behavior, things it knows how to do. Now imagine that you've got a, a chef working on this class and using this class as a kind of recipe or instructions and ingredients to make some different instances or objects of that class. So here we've, the chef has used this class or used the instructions to make six instances which are exactly the same initially but may change later. Let's look again at what a class contains. As I said, state, behavior, and if I want to make a new instance or a new object of that class, then I have to use the keyword new, surprisingly, in Java. Let's look at the human being class, and let's see how some instances are created of that. I'm just going to pause that. I can see in each of these cases, a new human is being created. It's using the new keyword in Java. And in the constructor, which we'll learn how to do later, it's passing in a value which will personalize that instance or object and give it, in this case, give it the name Valentine. A class consists of, as well as holding state and behavior, there are two real parts to a class. There's a static part and a non-static part. And if I divide those up, and let's say I slice them in half, the non-static part is the part which will be used to make new instances of that class. So here you can see that I've made four instances of this class using the non-static part, but this part here, which is the static part, i.e. static variables and static methods, it is not transferred across here. There's only ever one instance or one place where a static variable or a static method is stored which we'll get to in a second. So again, look what happens here. Before I make an instance, this is removed and the instance actually gets created from just the non-static code. So again, look at this closely. This is a static variable, static string species. It is not used when the instance is created. Let's just look at this in, in real life, in practice. This is the class. This is the whole definition which I'm going to use. And first of all, I'm going to make a new instance of the human being class using the new keyword in Java. Then using that variable which stores a reference to that new object, i.e. me, I'm going to change its first name, this one here. I'm going to change its first name to Ken. Then I'm going to change its last name to McClure. Then I'm going to change its age to 47. And then finally, I'm going to change its weight to 72.5 float. Now, interestingly, how do I access the species of that human being? Well, as we've already said, species will be common for all of the instances of the human being class. So if I, therefore, if I access it like this, as you might expect, human being dot species equal human. Should I do that or should I do this? Because me, if you remember, re refers directly to the single instance I've made above and human being refers to the actual class. So which do you think would be the correct way of accessing species? Okay, let's look at the answer to that question. Um, this is 
BlueJ, which is a very similar program to NetBeans or, or to Eclipse, and it just allows us to see the class visually. Um, so I thought I'd use it this time. I've just made a class called Human Being. You can see it there. It has, remember, a static variable, which has been highlighted here, called Species. And I'm going to paste in here the code that we had before and execute it. That has just created um, a new variable, a new instance of the human being class called me. If I say me um, system.out.println, I'm going to be using that a bit. I better spell it right. Print line. And I'm just going to copy that onto the clipboard because I'm going to be using it a couple of times. There you go. So if I say, um, if I print out me dot age and execute that I will get 47 so that's uh, just as we expected it to be and the question was how do I refer to that variable species do I say me dot species or do I say human being um, well the answer is it doesn't matter it doesn't matter but it's much better to use the name of the class followed by the variable if it's static. So I'm going to show you exactly what happens. If I say human being dot species um, equals um, equals human then I say me um, if I print out me dot species it will also be human as you can see. So both of those variables will refer to the same uh, static. Both of those ways of referencing it are exactly the same and they both refer to exactly the same variable of which there is only one no matter how many instances of that class human being I create. If I make another human being, I'm just going to copy that code um, and I call this one yeah, human being you. I just create it and it's obviously you know kind of empty at the minute, doesn't have anything at all and I say u.species and I print that out Uh -huh. you'll see that that is also equal to human because all of those classes share the same variables. Now, that will work, but the way that you should do it is always using the class name if it's a static variable, not using the instance name. And the reason for that is that in your code that makes it very, very obvious which variables are static and which ones aren't to someone else who is maybe looking at your code later on or it might even remind you if you come back to your code in six months. Um, because you may come back to it if you use the me variable and think, oh, this is just an instance variable of that class. And you might set it to something different and affect all the other you know, instances of human being which have been created. Okay, um, I hope that's cleared it up. Now let's jump back. Okay, so let's uh, have a quick summary of what we've gone through with classes and instances. A class is a blueprint or a template. Some people think of it as a cookie cutter and there is only ever one. It holds state, which are variables, attributes, fields, etc. And it holds behavior, which are methods, actions, functions, subroutines, etc. Only the non-static parts of a class are used when you make a new object or a new instance. As we saw, the static parts only exist in one place and they're, they're not duplicated. A class can have an unlimited amount of objects or instances. Actually, it's limited by the memory of your computer, or the memory that's reserved on the heap for the computer, but um, in theory it can have an unlimited number of objects or instances made, but there's only ever one class, i.e. the cookie cutter or the template, there's only ever one of them. And if we think of the static variables or static methods, there's only one of those as well. We can imagine them being stored inside the class, and not inside the object. And a final reminder, when you're thinking of a class, remember the cookie cutter, and when you think of an object, remember the gingerbread men. Each start off the same shape, but then can later on be personalized by changing their attributes 